Welcome to the flock. Let's dive into the topic of dilutions by using the M1V1 equals M2V2 formula to calculate for them. Stick around to see how to do just that. The topic of dilution in this lesson is going to revolve around the concept of hummingbird feeder, so sugar water. Before we can dilute the sugar water, we first need to figure out what the molarity of the sugar water would be. Let's say we took 120 grams of sugar and we dissolved it in some water, 1.5 liters of it. We want to know what the molarity of that would be. I already went through the hassle of converting those grams to moles for you using molar mass in order to determine that there are 0.35 moles in 120 grams of sugar. If we want to know the molarity, that's simply the moles per liter. We already said we have 0.35 moles and we have 1.5 liters. So dividing those two values, I end up with a molarity of 0.233 molar, which we represent with a big M, or a moles per liter. For this hummingbird feeder solution, we should recall from past lessons that the sugar is considered the solute and the water is considered the solvent. We mix the solute with the solvent to create a solution. But what if we added too much sugar? What if that much sugar, that high concentration, would literally cause the hummingbird's little hearts to beat so fast they would just explode into a ball of feathers? Well, that would be horrible. So we don't want to harm the hummingbirds, we're trying to feed them. So instead of just dumping out that whole solution you just made, why don't we just dilute it? If we add more water to this solution we've already generated, we should be able to dilute it. But how much water? So this is where that first problem you saw at the beginning of the video comes into play. If we had a supposed dangerous molarity of hummingbird feeder that was the 0.233 molar concentration we just calculated, and we need to dilute it in order to save the hummingbirds, and we need to make it 0.15 molar instead, we're going to use the M1V1 equals M2V2 equation. But what on earth does each piece of this equation even mean? I'm so glad you asked. The M1 is the initial molarity, the moles per liter that you started with from the stock solution. The V1 is your initial volume of solution that you used in liters. That's important here because a lot of questions will ask you in milliliters and you have to convert it to liters before you can plug it into this calculation correctly. M2 is the final molarity, again in moles per liter, and that's our desired goal concentration. And the V2, this is also very important, that's the volume of your chemical and your water together. So if you're trying to specifically solve for an amount of water or chemical, you would have to subtract out the initial V1 you started with to get to that answer. Since solving for V2 and how much water to add is probably the most challenging aspect of using M1V1 equals M2V2, let's go ahead and try that kind of problem first. This is the same problem as before, and we already know that we had 0.233 molar as our beginning concentration, our M1, the initial molarity. We also know that we made 1.5 liters of that initial concentrated hummingbird feeder. The question told us that in order to keep it safe for the hummingbirds, we need to dilute it to 0.15 molar, so that would be our M2. And now we want to know how much water do we need to add to the solution we've already generated in order to create that 0.15 molar solution. In math, whenever there are letters directly next to each other, that means multiply. So when the M and the V are next to each other, that technically means they are being multiplied together. So all we have to do now is plug and chug the values into our equation. Our M1 is the 0.233 moles per liter. Our V1 is 1.5 liters, and it is already in liters, so we're good there. It's not in milliliters, so we don't have to do any extra conversions. And we set that equal to our M2 value of 0.15 multiplied essentially by X. So in math, you've probably seen X and Y used a lot more than V2, 
but you can say v2 or you can say x there as your variable for whatever it is you're solving for. Whatever you're more comfortable with, rock that. Oh no! So now all we have to do is multiply 0.233 by 1.5 for a value of 0.3495. Now that value is still set equal to 0.15x or times v2. When we see this kind of setup in math, we need to isolate the x alone. And in order to do that, if this side is multiplying, to undo multiply, we have to divide each side by the same number in order to get the x alone. So I'm going to divide off my 0.15 from both sides. 0.15 divided by itself gets rid of it on the right side, and 0.3495 divided by 0.15 gives us a value of 2.33. And that would be equivalent to our x or our v2, what we were solving for here. So remember, v2 is a final total volume. So altogether, we should have 2.33 liters of total solution in order to have a molarity of 0.15 safe hummingbird feeder solution. In other words, if I need to figure out how much water to add, I need to know how much of this is water and how much of this is original chemical we started with. If you catch where I'm going with this, I need to subtract 1.5 from my 2.33 total volume in order to figure out how much water I need to add. If I subtract those two values, I get 0.83 liters. That's how much water I would need to add to my already existing solution in order to create a new diluted solution of 0.15 molar. So that you can sit out on a hot summer day and watch the hummingbirds fly around and drink your Kool-Aid. Go ahead and give this one a try. All right, here we go. Let's see if you got your answer correct. Now again, keep in mind, this question is asking you how much more water do you need to add? This eight liters is now your total volume, including what you started with, which was three liters. So if I need to know how much water to add, I need to subtract these two values. So eight minus three will give us a value of five liters. I would need to add five liters to the three liters of two molar that I already have in order to create 0.75 molar Kool-Aid. So how do you know when to use this dilution formula, the M1V1 equals M2V2? Well, it's pretty straightforward as long as you can pick out what you're given. So if you were given two molarities, so two moles per liter, two concentrations, and one volume, you can use it. If you were given two volumes, so two things that were in milliliters or liters, and one molarity, one concentration, or moles per liter units, you know that you could use this dilution formula. The overall takeaway here is that whenever you're given three variables that are knowns, they're given to you as a gift in the problem, and you're solving for the fourth variable, the unknown, you can use the dilution formula. Well, we've seen how to calculate going to V2, but what if we needed to calculate for, say, M1 going the other way? Let's try it. But I know I use 20 milliliters, so 20 milliliters is my initial volume that I used. Notice I didn't write that on the line because I need a value in liters. We'll come back to that in a second. I also know that my final product was 150 milliliters. I made that much of my solution. And I had originally calculated that my new concentration would be 0.75 molar. And I need to figure out what my stock concentration was since I threw out the bottle. Aww. Before I can plug and chug into my M1V1 equals M2V2 dilution formula, I first need to convert these milliliters to liters. Now, milli is essentially 10 raised to the negative third power, which means anytime you see milli, you're going to move a decimal place to the left three times. So for 20, we technically have an invisible decimal point right there, and we just need to move it back three spaces, and that will give us our liter value. For the 150 milliliters, again, there's an invisible decimal point right there that we just move back three spaces. So we have 0.15 liters in total at the end. Now I can plug and chug into my original equation. We're solving for M1 this time, so that's our X value. Our V1 is 0.02 liters. Our M2 is 0.75 moles per liter. And our final total volume is 0.15 liters. 
Let's start by multiplying together the two numbers we have, 0.75 and 0.15, to give us a value of 0.1125. We need to solve for x now, so we need to divide off the 0.02 in order to get x alone. When we divide 0.1125 by 0.02, we get a value of 5.625 moles per liter. Now we have the answer to our initial molarity. That is what my stock bottle contained. Phew, good thing that this dilution formula saved the day. Before you try the next problem, there's two words you should be familiar with when using dilutions. An aliquot is a subvolume of an original liquid sample. So for example, if I measure out one milliliter from a 50 milliliter sample, that one milliliter that I took out from the original sample is an aliquot. Oh no! A diluent is the liquid by which the sample is diluted. So from my original 50 milliliter sample that I took one milliliter aliquot from, if I were to add, say, 10 milliliters of water to that, then the 10 milliliters of water would be the diluent. Now that you know what an aliquot and a diluent is, go ahead and give this calculation a try, solving for M2 this time. Pause the video now. Let's check your answer and see if you did it right. So your final concentration should be 0.1 moles per liter, which makes sense because that is less of a concentration than what you started with. So you know you probably did it right if your M2 happens to be less than your M1. Hopefully you feel like you understand the concept pretty well. Go ahead and test yourself before you wreck yourself by calculating for V1 this time for ocean water. If you are trying to figure out what the original concentration of salty seawater is, by the way, if you do this calculation correctly, you will roughly get the correct concentration of ocean water. In this video, we discussed the dilution formula M1V1 equals M2V2, and we practiced solving for each of the variables, starting with V2 and then working our way to M1 and also M2 and now V1 if you try this test yourself. And you also learned what an aliquot and a diluent are. I hope that all your troubles will be diluted away and I'm wishing you a very ducky day. Please give this video a cool wax up and hope to see you again soon. No ducks, no glory.